coming up on Safety and Awareness Today. We're talking about bus safety. We're talking about the protection of one of the greatest resources of our country, children. We're talking about some of the being aware. Anything could happen. Okay. Uh, any furtive movements, you know, just raises our suspicion. How can we strengthen our upper shoulder structure? School bus safety, it's important. Let's go talk to Pete Gagliano, Transportation Director of the New Hartford School District. It's nice to have you with us, Pete. Glad to be here. And now we're talking about bus safety. We're talking about the protection of one of the greatest resources of our country, children. Exactly. Yeah, and when we're and some of these buses carry well. Some have uh, small buses with uh, ten or sixteen, but they as many as how many? Sixty-six Two? students we can carry. Sixty-six students on some of these buses. That's a lot of young lives that we're looking to take care of. And there's some basic signals that these children are being taught to follow that we want the drivers and everybody to be aware of regarding their safety. That's very correct. Okay, when they get off the bus. Um, if the bus driver wants them to cross in front of the bus uh, so that they can get to their home to the other side, what's the signal for that? What's the signal for crossing? Well, as soon as the child gets off the bus, the child needs to get away from the bus three to five feet and walk ten foot in front of the bus. Oh, okay. And at all times look at the driver. Okay. So when the driver thinks the child can cross, the child will look at the driver and the driver will give the signal. Of, it's, of a go ahead. A go ahead. So the thumb is up. It's and the just, finger out the means finger you're, out. you're safe to cross. You're safe to cross. So prior of, the, of any school bus that's ready to disembark a student, will start his yellow warning lights. Okay. Come to a complete stop. Right. He will open a door and will activate his red lights. Child will get off the bus. Okay. Get away from the bus. Walk ten feet in front of the bus, and then look for the driver's signal. All right. Now. You said that uh, they're going to put the yellow warning lights on, so we'll get, the driver should be prepared that the bus is going to stop. Any driver forward and behind and any behind. school bus, the warning lights are telling to the public that that school bus is going to go right. stop. But they won't put the red lights on with the sign out until the bus stops. Until it's physically stopped. So he physically stops the bus, then he checks, and he puts those on and secures everything at that point. So at that point, the driver is looking in his mirrors, Right. Left to right and also behind him and in front of him at all times. All right. Now, if, if the children get off and we've got now we've got some distance from the bus where, so the bus driver can see them, everything is a little more under control. What if he wants them to stop? What's the hand sign for that? The driver will either blow the horn and hopefully the child is looking at the driver at all times. Right. The driver will put his hand up. And that means and stop. And also blow the horn. Okay. And that now, means stop or return to the curb. Okay. Now I think more specifically, sometimes they say the the blowing of the horn is get back to the curb. It's more effective the than watching right. for the hand signal. Correct. But, but the hand signal is stop where you are. Correct. All right. So so uh, stop where you are with the open hand signal. Now um, we have seat belts on the buses. All right. They, it isn't mandatory that the children use them, but we're trying to encourage parents to use them, aren't we? At all times. All At right. all times. Uh, New York State implemented seat belts since 1987 that they're mandatory to be installed on any school bus. Yeah, I got on this bus. I mean, there's seat belts there for the children. Uh, you know, I know sometimes the junior high and high school kids are a little tough to get them to cooperate, but if we can teach the uh, kindergartners and the first graders and the second graders to get comfortable with it, it's good. It's a good it's thing. It's the little tights that need to wear the seat belts at all times, because yeah. you'll never know got yeah. a bit if an accident occurs and they also sure. have seat belt on. Oh, my heavens. And the bus drivers, 
what a job they've got. They, that's a really tough job. People don't. People think school bus driving isn't tough, but it's one of the toughest oh, the employments in, in the industry. Yeah, the responsibility is amazing, and they have to be a, a bit of a psychologist in some respects, as well as a teacher, as well as a driver. Correct. Now, it, they go through a program, too, for uh, driving buses. Uh, as soon as you become a school bus driver, you have to attend a 30-hour class of school bus training. Okay. Then every year, you, you're into a two-hour renewal renewal twice a year wonderful that's there's a lot of safety factors going on you know uh, I mean having you now you're right now you're affiliated with the New Hartford School District that's correct all right and they have their own buses that's correct wow what and it's quite a fleet it's an impressive fleet a lot of school districts do you have a wonderful well, fleet of well, buses thank you very much Man. Um, it's been very professional the people I've met regarding New Hartford and what they do uh, my congratulations to you on the, on the safety and the precautions you take for our children. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. And I hope we have a safe year. Oh, we will. Thank you thanks for your again. time. This is a self-defense technique against a broke gram. I have with me right now Cheryl Fraley and Nicole Crano that are going to assist me in demonstrating this technique to you. Keep in mind, although it is more complex, it is a technique that you can learn to do. And unlike some defensive techniques, it does not just take care of the part of the attack that is dealing with your body. It deals with the attacker, all right? So if you two will face each other, I'm going to have Cheryl grab Nicole's throat. You grab the throat. First thing that Cheryl did is what an attacker would do. She got her other weapon ready, her left hand. That means when we do do this technique, it must be clean and smooth flowing. But as we break it into parts, Nicole is going to take her outside left shoulder. This is the arm, the same side as the arm that grabbed her. She's going to face Cheryl with her hand as if to go, hi. See the hi. See that? Do hi again. Hi. You have me by the throat. Then she's going to take her other arm, bring it around, and there is a torque in her waist shifting her hips so that she can get this wrist and this elbow of her right arm parallel with the floor. At that moment, in that flow, she steps, rotates, now hot, stop right there. At this particular moment, she has locked this person's arm. The ulnar radius bone both have rotated to protect themselves. The humerus bone has rotated to protect itself, but unfortunately it's all worked its way up to the shoulder. The shoulder dislocation now is going to happen if you do this fast. Now let's try it one more time and let's switch sides please. And we're just going to see it from the other side. Same arm grab, hand comes up, says hi, you have grabbed me by the throat, you shouldn't. Other hand goes over, she grabs, see this elbow up, wrist up, takes a little torque with the body. In the flow, it goes very nicely, steps with the right foot, and rotates facing the opponent. Now, right there it is. There's the lock. You have the opportunity to strike to the back of the leg, to the base of the back, to the head, or simply to drop them to the floor. Because if she pushes down on the arm, push down on the arm, Cheryl's going to go down. All right? And as you can see from the scenario on the street, you can drop that person and simply walk away. Coming up on Safety and Awareness Today. Okay, the lights are on, the sirens are going, what should you do? I'd like to see their hands. Their hands should be visible to you. Driving a vehicle is a job of responsibility. There's a lot to keep in mind. And there's a group of people, men and women out there, to help us remember. The New York State Troopers. When they pull us over for just checking something or because we've made a mistake, there's certain things we should do. Let's go take a minute and talk to Trooper Ted Gage about how we should handle that situation. Well, Trooper Gage, we're talking about some of the being aware if you're pulled over by a New York State trooper, uh, what does he or she expect you to do? In other words, okay, the lights are on, the sirens are going, what should you do? Well, first of all, you want to find a good spot to pull over. 
pole wall, far enough off the shoulder where it's not going to have you go off the roadway, but far enough over where you're not going to be hit by other traffic. All right, and, and, and state troopers normally are, before they even turn on the lights many times, they're looking for the place. So they may even be behind you for a mile or exactly. two. Exactly. Because they're looking for a safe place to have you pull over. Yes, we want a spot that's going to be clear from traffic not on a hidden corner or a hill crest. Okay, and, and once that car pulls over, then what are some of the guidelines that the state troopers follow for safety? Well, we're gonna position our vehicle in such a way that if there is a collision, it's not gonna contact myself while I'm talking to the individual or their vehicle. Right. And if it does, it's gonna keep us out of harm's way. All right, and we talked a little earlier, now you stagger it out just a bit more to the road than the vehicle you've pulled over. Yes, to give us a little buffer zone. And you turn the wheel to the outside of the road, to the guardrails, to the, to the curb. Yes, exactly. All right, so if it is hit, that's where it goes. Yes. Very, very interesting. Now, when you approach the car, what do you expect the person to do? Now, they may have done nothing and you're just checking stuff, or they may have done something really foolish, like they're chatting away on the cell phone without hands free, yes. and they're just totally occupied doing this, and they're not watching anything else, which is why it's a law now, Right. all right, um, or speeding. So as you approach the car, um, what do you expect them to provide you? Well, I'm expecting them to provide me with their license, registration, and insurance card. Okay. Uh, I'd like to see their hands. That's a big thing, isn't yes. it? Yes. Their hands should be visible to you. Not, they don't have to be on the steering wheel, but they must. They sh really should they be should visible. They should be visible. It helps us out. The, the more comfortable we feel with the stop, yes. the easier it's going to go. The easy, that, I like that, and that's an honest way. I think uh, one of the things I've always commented when I've worked with police units uh, is take your sunglasses off. It is nice to see their eyes. It's very, it's, it's a comforting thing to see yes. their eyes because a person's eyes tell you some of the things they're thinking and what they're going to do. They sure do. Yeah, we believe that in the martial arts as well. Now, prior to going up to the vehicle, they may want to go to the glove compartment and get all this stuff, but sh they should wait. We'd like them to wait until they're asked to provide it. Okay. Uh, any furtive movements, you know, just raises our suspicion. All right, good. Yeah, and they may... I think one of the phrases is they may want to get this over with as, as quickly as possible. Yes. But if they're moving too quick, they also end up looking guilty and they start to look like there's more going on than, than what, Correct. what is going on. All right. So then now everything is going fine. You've pulled them over. Uh, you're asking for the registration and the license and the insurance and you're talking to them. You may go back to the car and run it. And, yes. And check it out. Uh, or you may ask them to get out of the car. If you ask the person to get out of the car, where should they go? What should they do? Well, they should go where directed. Usually it's towards the fronts of the vehicles, uh, usually off the roadway. Okay, but not to the rear? Not to the rear. Again, safety factor for a collision to your vehicle in trapping you in them. In exactly. You don't want to be pinched in between vehicles. All right, so they go to the front of the vehicle. That, that all makes good sense. I think anything they, could happen. Anything could happen. I think we've seen that in the last couple of years. You have a tough job. Uh, we could make it a lot easier if we use hands-free, if we didn't speed, and if we use caution and use some common sense out there would yes. make your job easier. It sure would. All right. Thank you again, Trooper Gates, yes, for spending welcome. time with us, you know, and spending time out here at the uh, Herkimer State Trooper location. Uh, stay safe and the best to you. Coming up on Safety and Awareness Today. I have two five-pound free weights here in my hands, yeah. and we're just going to do a basic deltoid race. Right now we're at Planet Fitness and we're going to talk with Colleen Teamy, who's a fitness professional about some fitness exercises for your well-being. Hi, I'm Colleen Nestor Teamy from Teamy Fitness Works of Planet Fitness. Colleen, we're having fun working out. I can see you do a lot of it, obviously, and we're talking about deltoids today. How can we strengthen our upper shoulder structure? Okay, I have a very simple one that we can do with free weights. I have two five-pound free weights here on my hands, yeah. and we're just going to do a basic deltoid raise. Okay. okay. You want a soft bend in your elbow. Yeah. You lift the weight up you got a little, slowly. Yep. Okay, I see okay. a little bend in and the elbow. Try not to go higher than the shoulders. I see this a lot at the gym. 
Like yeah, this. flapping of the wings. Exactly. Flapping of the exactly. wings. Your shoulder, your shoulder is a very mobile joint. So okay. You have to be careful. You want to be careful you don't impinge the shoulder joint. Yep. If I was to raise my hand, I'd have to rotate it this way to get it up higher comfortably without pulling okay. the joint. All right. So if you can do the deltoid raise nice and slow, up and back down. All right. Now, if, I, if I'm doing this, I get my feet together too? You can take them apart, you can do a Doesn't matter. Stance, stance. Okay, yep. okay. So it's yep. just. Just hold those abs nice here. and Yeah, and then slowly lower. And then lower. Yeah, can you feel that? Right yes, here. I can. Yep, yep, I can. Here. Yep, hold for a sec. Breathe. See here yep. and breathe. Yeah. All right, one more. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, if you want to do a little challenge with this too, add yeah. a little bit of the core in there, put a little balance in. A little so balance. I, and that's good. Variety that's good. Is a spice of life. You can bring up one leg. Yep. And do the same thing. And lift. That's nice. And All right. Okay. Well, I might want to pick, use your weights here in a minute. So I put this leg up. Uh huh. Here. Yeah. To here. Yeah. So now you're working the deltoids. Here. You're working the lower body and definitely working that core. Here. Balance. Excellent. Now Excellent. Try it with one weight. Yep. Raise. Whoa! Very nice. Okay, but Let's that's hard. That's a nice challenge. That is hard. Yeah, that you. is. That it is. Keeps the exercise from getting boring. You're working that deltoid there. You're working balance, a little coordination. Wow. Yeah. I can feel that. Whoa! That's that's really good. Okay. That's very good. Excellent. So that's going to work our deltoids. Yeah. And at the same time, we can get a little better balance. You got that. I love it. I love it. We're going to move on to some more safety awareness on the show, but I want to thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Okay. The self-defense technique we're going to go over right now is a self-defense technique that you can do when you've become surprised by an attacker you can't see who has come from behind and pushed you up against the outside wall of a building the wall of a room, maybe up against some lockers. The fact is that when that happens, there is something you can do and you can be aware of to be able to get out from between that attacker and that wall that you've been pushed up against. I have Eric Stolick with me. I'm going to have him do this so I can point some of these uh, small points out. He comes up, he pushes me up against the wall. Now, if you'll notice, my hands immediately go up to protect my face from the wall. My elbows will protect my upper chest, and that's what my arms want to do. They want to protect my face and my chest, so they don't go high. They go right here where they're supposed to. To be able to get out of this, all I want to do is take one of my arms. I'm going to take my left one, I'm going to drop it. I'm going to slide it down that wall as they're pushing and drop it. I'm going to reach for the floor with that arm that I've dropped between my body, I'm going to do it all in one, one swoop, reach for the floor, and it's going to pull my shoulder. And as it pulls my shoulder, I bring this arm around. Now, I'll be able to elbow strike, forearm strike them in the head. More importantly, what I'm trying to do is to make sure they can't see what I'm doing next because I'm escaping. Now, I can turn and palm strike here. I can dip and palm strike to the knee or simply move away. Good, if you're going to kind of move off. Now, keep in mind what you saw me do. How can that be prevented? So I can't do it. One thing is for that person to tell me to put my hands high on the wall. Once my hands go above my head, now dropping a shoulder becomes very difficult. Secondly, if somebody tells me to bring my feet away from the wall, once my feet are far enough out away from the wall so that my hands are here, my feet are here and I'm leaning to the wall, my hips or center of gravity actually are more forward towards the wall than my heels. Now I can't bring my hands off the wall. So when you are pushed up, instead of trying to push yourself away and stabilize your body, you're pushed up, you drop that hand and rotate and that will take you off the wall and it'll take you out of that spot between the attacker and that rock or hard place, okay? Coming up on the next Safety and Awareness Today. Safety and Awareness Today is gonna to cover bicycle motocross and it is an exciting sport. I can't wait to get out on the track 
and the young people are fast, but the name of the show is Safety and Awareness. And today, we're all here, but it's raining. So you're gonna have to wait till next month when we shoot on a better day and see Bicycle Motocross. The Safety and Awareness Today show is in its second year, and we have covered a number of topics. If you have a job, sport, or activity that involves safety procedures for you or the community, we would like to cover it for the show. Write us at safetyandawareness at cnyhomepage.com.